finished replacing the shift linkage for the DQ500 transmission. Came out pretty good. There it goes. Sweet, nice. Had to take all of this apart. Also drop my drive shaft. There it is right here. And also the heat shield set up the car. I don't know if you can see well. Mm -hmm. uh, looks pretty good. Being pretty good. Had to go through and take the drum shirt back off. Oh, man. Sitting over there. Of course, the insulation is the heat shield. <laughs> Take that off, too. Oh, got it done. Back at it again. I decided to come back and grab the crankshaft, but primarily that's the main thing I want. But I'm going to see if I can get the whole block as a core, even though it's broke off and damaged in several areas. I like to slice the block in half and to be able to use the block as a reference point as far as measuring the cylinder thickness and how deep that we can bore a block out for this type of 3.6 liter engine. Okay, I decided to come back and grab the crankshaft, but I'm going to snatch the whole block out. Of course, you have to take the block out pretty much to get the crankshaft. And I'm going to see if they'll send me the whole block as a core. It was raining so hard yesterday. I had the hood closed, but you can see all the moisture and everything. How the cylinders rusted that quick just from taking the cylinder head off. But I would like to be able to slice this block in half and just use it as a reference. That way we can check the 10 degree vr6 3.6 liter block angle and see how much we can bore this thing out to if the engine block out you can see very clear with bolts snapped off in different locations primarily went to crankshaft but i'm gonna see if they'll send me the whole block as a core and that way i can slice this in half and see how big we can bore these babies Well, apparently they stopped selling the engine block, so I got the crankshaft. So I'll load it up into the S5, and mission accomplished. I would have preferred to get the whole block, but crankshaft is basically what I needed. I sent off the original crankshaft to Bryant Racing to possibly have a forge or billet crankshaft made, and I wanted to at least get this one to replace the one for Teddy's motor that I sent back to Bryant Racing and I'll have at least a crankshaft for his spare motor and also got a time cover just in case. Just getting home from work, got a fresh delivery of HPL oil for the dual clutch transmission and for the engine. The 7590 is for our DQ500. And this would be 550 if I'm not mistaken. Pretty sure 550 and that'll be for the engine. Getting ready, baby. And this is some other performance part. We'll see. Today was an old day. We received all of our high performance oil for our 3.6 liter Audi TT project build. We received our Boosted Technology HPL oil for our engine, 550. Our HPL Synthetic High Performance Gear Oil for the DQ500 transmission. And our Hardex Fluid oil will drive for our Hardex Control Unit in the rear diff. I am on man Robert's Oxygen and I just picked up a uh, tank for back purging and some fittings for the line a little over 300 bucks so yes <laughs> very expensive 
perches. So we're trying to definitely get set up for getting this header fabricated and welded up. So let's do this. Picked up some supplies today and some of the last bits of items came in. So my stainless steel rod for TIG welding came in today uh, for 308, uh, 1 And it's a pound of wire or rod for my TIG welder for tech welding. I also picked up a few days ago my argon regulator. This is just specifically for purging. I also have the tank as well. which is a 40 pound tank. So luckily they gave it to me at a, oh no, they gave me compressed gas. I requested argon. Ah, 75% argon, 25%. Uh, that's what this is. I want it full argon. Ugh. I mean, it'll still work. It's not bad for back purging. So I do have 100% argon for the welder itself and this would not be totally bad for back purging. So either way it'll work out. So I thought at first they sold me only compressed gas until I got a closer look at the label and saw 75% all gone. So this is still work for the rest of the pipes but basically as I stated it's going to be just a back purge itself which will be excellent for that. 100% all gone to be better. 75% still works perfectly fine. Picked up some extra welding gloves, just some backups. I have a good pair, but picked them up as well as some welding sleeves. And this is the main part that I was looking for. This connector right here, or adapter, I was using it to fabricate a back purge gauge. And I was going to use a 3 16th, I had the 3 16th inch line, but use a quarter inch fitting right here, which would bolt into this. And then this whole sleeve will go up into here. Only thing I did not like is the way the tip of this tapers. And with it tapering like that, I don't feel as though it would give a good enough seal. But if you look at this, this is designed perfectly for this. And it fits in there and it'll just seal properly. So therefore, all I have to do is just connect this itself and put my line, attach my line to the hose, and then just crimp it. And that is it. Run the rest in two. And I have also some splicers that I can run into some purge blocks or plugs that I can push into the pipe work. So all of this works out pretty good for the most part. Now it's time for some action. See it's another package from UPS and I'm not exactly sure what this is. All I know it says ECU Master. Could have been something Teddy ordered or I ordered. Let's see. That would be something I ordered from Brookline. Okay, well, this is a product to help us get Betty 60 foot on the TT. And these would be front control links. And this will replace the original factory air arm. So we'll break this open and take a better detailed look. Okay, I'm outside unpacking the box and as you can see this is for the 8J platform and this is what this is, an Audi TT 8J. So we're in search of trying to get as much traction as possible because pushing a turbocharged 3.6 liter engine built properly is definitely going to be challenges putting the power down to the ground. So for this we're going to be replacing this front control arm which is here for the aftermarket performance bushings and links and we'll see how this turns out. I was about to test fit the rear brake kit. Forged brakes, we have four piston calibers with, if I'm not mistaken, two piece rotors for this so that we can make sure we still have great stopping power. But still in preparation to install the front control arm assembly we ordered a Berkline racing kit and of course as I stated we're going to make this beast go faster than fast. I was about to test fit our rear brake kit that we have a four piston forge caliber kit for the, the rear of this TT and as expected also our Berkline control link front A-arm setup came in 
And instead, I'm going to go ahead and install this. And then tomorrow, I can test fit these brake calibers to make sure everything fits properly. But this, we purchased this in preparation to trying to get the best 60 foot as possible. We originally had ordered a front subframe to match up with the rear Verkline subframe. But unfortunately, our rack and pinion is designed a little bit different. So instead of swapping out the whole rack and pinion, we instead swapped out for the control link setup because, of course, this will put down better 60 foot being able to have the adjustability of all the links set up and having adjustments better than just a fixed subframe. So this definitely has some nice adjustments for extending the rack. You can actually see the quality of these pieces are made very well. Gives us quite a bit of adjustment and we'll go ahead and install this so that we can continue with this project. Now, and I had to film this. This has been my discrepancy for the past year and a half with receiving nice quality products, but freaking cheesy as hardware that comes with the products. This is insane. So, for example, this bolt fits perfectly back here through this. As you can see, this will go through fairly nice. Okay, but when we install it in the chassis, we have to install it with this mounted up against the body and this piece facing downward. A couple different reasons for safety that will prevent this bolt from just dropping out and your link from just swinging out and losing steering control. I've even seen a video today of them mentioning similar things happen and several accidents happen with Honda vehicles because someone improperly installed the hardware. If this is up, if that nut falls off, this bolt will still be up against the body and that link is still be in position. But if it's upside down and that nut comes off and this drops out, then your control arm can pivot out of this bracket and cause a major accident, especially steering and drag racing. And if you're doing any high rate of speed, disaster waiting to happen. Anyway, factory bolts look how long they are compared to the hardware that I received far too short <laughs> I mean I, I, I positioned this all over here for one for example with left arm or right arm none of this matches up with what we need or works properly example this all right nice piece if this goes into here on this arm, and I did a test fit, this is what's driving me crazy. As you can see, I already had the anti seize on there. I'm trying to do this with one hand and film it the other. All right, let's get it in there. Oh, no wonder I swapped arms. All right, the original arm, I had the anti seize right here. I position it around for this bracket to be up so that way it can connect our control arm sensor uh, for when the car is on an angle or tracking control. Anyway, so with this arm, and we'll tap it over lightly for this to fit in position. And if we get this down in there into position, one of our discrepancies would be that the bottom of this bolt doesn't fit all the way in. But anyway, let me use the arm that I did just for test reasons. And this is only for show and tell. That's very tight. Original arm that I was using. Flip this back around here. See how easy it went through. <laughs> position this into here okay if I put this all the way into here as you can see all right we do have enough room to run our nut on here downfall is our shank does not come all the way through and as a result that would be play see that let me try to hold it steady 
Look at this play. This play right here. And you can see that. There you go, a lot better. I'm shifting it back and forth. That is here, moving back and forth. That would wear out extremely quick and wear this whole control arm out. This not good at all. Technically, it needs to be something that protrudes all the way through, like this, a bolt. Now, this is very long. It fits in perfectly as well. And this would be the bolt to use. Only downfall is when this compresses tight up against this, you get to the point where you just run out of thread. Um, that's not bad. That's probably what we would have to do. But the bolt is so long. Look how long it's sticking out. <laughs> I can see you going over a speed bump and this long bolt sticking out the bottom of something and, and, and catching and digging a hole to a speed bump or catching a hold of a transition plate. But anyway, I would probably have to slice part of this down because this is far too long and end up using this this will eliminate that play if it's tight which is good that's what we want we want the play to be eliminated and if i draw that down you'll be able to see this will compress down onto that shank that's what we want right there they may have it like that so you can run out of thread which means that everything will be tight the only downfall is you won't and and as a safety precautionary so that you don't compress this so tight to the point where all of this start rubbing so they may have it provisioned like that downfall is it is no directions at all that came with any of this stuff and i actually printed out some paperwork just to see and this doesn't even match up with the hardware we received at all a couple of bolts match up but you can see we have socket cap bolts and everything none of these pictures match up with and this is the exact part that we have you look in here hardware is still completely different at all i don't even see this in the picture this part that you may see in the picture yeah i don't see it don't see it at all so i will have to use some nice good quality hardware to replace some of the miscellaneous stuff that we received Okay, I'm finally able to pick back up where I left off. Found two brand new bolts inside my stash. And they only provided two of these. So even though I stated one's longer, they're pretty long. And I would have to probably cut the ends off a little bit. So that way it's not sticking out real far at the bottom. The second bolt, originally I think those bolts was for this section right here. Which would fit perfectly. So with me only having two bolts, I needed two more. Luckily, I have two brand new ones and we can go ahead and try to get this on the car. It's already getting dark, uh, even though the camera's not showing it. And I would have finished this by now had I not had to sort through hardware. I'll be just wrapping up this. But either way, this is not gonna stop me or deter me. Yes, it's dark and I am serious about this. Shh it so have the knuckle taken loose i'm in the process of loosening up the front motor mount so i can jack up the engine and pull this bolt out and put the new control arm in so we need to put some numbers on the board we need to get this bad boy up and running no ifs ands and buts about it I am finally about to install the driver's side control arm. Just finding the proper hardware that all matches up is extremely important to me and beneficial. For example, the bolts that came with here for here, the bolt going to this bushing right here for the knuckle, we received Mitch Mac bolts, we received two socket caps and a regular hex bolt and <laughs> and then this one was too short to fit in here so i had to pretty much gather all new hardware and we were only able to use one bolt <laughs> out of each package which is insane and that's this bolt right here insane everything else has been replaced hardware 
I got tired. I actually had this side installed, these bolts, and I got tired of the Mitchmack bolts having to use an Allen. And with these being nylock nuts, it was taking so much force to tighten this up. This would strip out, trying to get them back off. So it wasn't even worth it. So I have the driver's side link in, and I'm about to install the rear strut and just for an example it's pretty cool to see you can see how this shock is pivoted on an angle the strut assembly and before i attach this rear strut support you can see how i can actually tilt the angle back and forth so this itself that straightens this <laughs> almost up and this pushes it forward on an angle it's a lot you can kind of actually do with this. You can actually stretch it out, extend the wheelbase a little bit better. This will stiffen up things drastically. So for example, a lot of the bushings, instead of it holding firm, it will be given back and forth. These are pretty much fixed. So therefore, if you were getting wheel hop or just under load, your wheel wants to kick back and hit this part of the fender you can actually dial it in to create actually more force to keep everything tilted forward as well as extending the wheelbase a little bit so this is pretty neat how you can adjust a lot of these joints on here okay i'm just finishing up and packing up my tools and the time 12.56 Almost one o'clock in the morning. By the time I finish packing up, it'll be well after one. And I clean all these tools up. I got tools everywhere. But, control arms are on. Turned out very good. I have my original sensor connected back for the anti roll and pretty much traction. So that way you can see if the car is tilted or off angle. Have those all the way up in position. Get the brake line. Control arms on. These are nice bushings. I had to actually modify this bracket right here a little bit. I had to shim it. I didn't like the way it fit up against the body because to me it appears they tick off more so you can see right here we're squared up and I'm not sure if I can put it here, here we go. and I have my spacers right in here so that everything can bolt up square but when I bolted this up flush it, was, it left a gap in here which is not good at all because if I torque this all the way down with the gap in there, it could potentially crack this whole bracket. So when I put the spacers in there, I had to find a proper size spacer. And when I tighten this up, it brought this perfectly up against the body of the car, which was good. And I had to make the same modification on both sides. And this is the passenger side. Turned out pretty good also. Actually, let me turn the light on. They say vertical line making fast faster, so that's what we're trying to do with this bad boy. We're making it faster, a lot faster. So we have some nice control links into position. That way we can pretty much start dialing in traction if we have problems with traction. And at the same time, the elimination of a lot of the factory bushings it will take away from potential wheel hop we can actually adjust this whole position the we adjust that rod back there we can actually kick this further forward or kick that back and in reference technic technically if you pretty much kick this forward a little bit you're kind of extending the wheelbase a lot of the honda guys they're doing the same thing at the rear of the car they're taking their rear wheel back to kind of extend the wheelbase but that'll help out with 60 foot times. So I had to actually 
pretty much jack the take all the motor mount bolts back out in order to raise the motor up in order to get these bolts out because this one is right up against the oil pan and definitely the other one is right up against the transmission if I try to get that out so I had to raise the whole engine up so needless to say this was an extremely time consuming chore but at the end it'll all be worth it well I have all the tools packed up it is super dark quiet and the late 1.54 a.m. in the morning. Yes, I did go hardcore Saturday, October 22nd. It's been a day. But, the control arms are on. Mission accomplished.